This episode is brought to you by our friends at Better Man. Better Man is helping men everywhere have a clear biblical vision of manhood that changes everything. You can check them out at betterman.com. That is betterman.com. Kelly, we are back, Yep. Uh, which is why people are listening to us right now. Yep. And uh, we've been doing this season of Clearly where we're kind of figuring out as we go, the texts and all that. And uh, I genuinely wanted to hear your thoughts on it, your impressions on uh, how it's been f- for you, what, y- mm. y- what's what been helpful about this, what are you like... About this season. It's about this season. The, Look at that, we're doing a it weird. real, genuine, honest question from you. I'm <sighs> so caught off guard. I'm used to the crazy wow. random wow, at the Jimmy, beginning. You, you expressed <laughs> human kindness, and I'm not used to that. Uh, it's great. I love it. And I, I Do really, you need a minute to collect yourself and then- <laughs> Hold on. Reset. Okay. No. Uh, I really enjoyed it because um, the spirit of this season is really something that I believe in this just modeling for people, what do you do when you come to a hard passage? Um, What do you do with a genealogy? What do you do with um, God's wrath toward a nation? What do you do with these confusing passages that seem to contradict each other? I mean, I feel like that's so um, a, a normal experience for people. And I love that we're getting to talk about that. And even think through it ourselves in real time and go, oh, wait a minute, this is what stuck out to me. This is what I noticed and talk through that. Mm-hmm. Um, those are some of my favorite conversations in real life to have with people. Yeah, So it's for been sure. fun to do it well, here. Well, and this is how discipleship feels to me too. Like yes. you, you have a guy or a girl come to you and they're like, hey, I'm reading this and mm-hmm. I don't even know what's going on. And and you, now you're in it with them. And it's mm-hmm. like, you can either have the whole Bible memorized or you can have some tools in your tool belt right. to know how to mine the text with them. Mm-hmm. And uh, it, it's it's how we sharpen each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah. And I just love talking about the Bible with you. Oh my I gosh. I, have, yeah. I was going to say um, something different, actually. I wasn't going to say that, but mm-hmm. uh, that's really sweet. And I love you. That's fun. Uh, okay, sh- so shall let's, we? let's get to our passage for today. Okay. The holy wheel? No, you can't call it that. It is. Holy just means sacred. It just means set apart for a special use. And the only purpose for this wheel is to gain a passage. So this is a holy wheel. Kelly? Great. We'll see your turn to spin it. Okay. Here we go. I'm <laughs> going to spin it so spintastically. I got to 10 last time, so maybe you'll You got get to 10? You know, it goes in a circle, so wait. 21. 21. 21. Get us, get us the passage. We were a year married at 21. Oh, I remember it like it was yesterday. Here's the card. Okay, you got it? All right. I'm just, we're going to move on from that. <sighs> Though it is true, we were married very young. And I loved it. Ah. Ooh. 1 John 1. 1 John 1. 1 through 4. Yep, just a little just a little nug. Oh, this a little is, nugget. Wow, what a change from last <laughs> time. Nate. You guys out there are like, finally. Something <laughs> something nice. Comfy and cozy and familiar. <sighs> grab your grab your knapsacks and your juice boxes. We're gonna just that's I don't know why I thought I of don't those things. Know. That doesn't sound very cozy. Why did first John 1 I think end up more in like our, hot chocolate and our passage list? I feel like this is such a lovely passage you want to not do it no i really want to do it you want something because i got stuff girl you want to what you want you want revelation 16 you want some of that action (laughs) i mean i would but we're we already did a revelation passage okay Okay, we're first john one you want to read it (sighs) i do what was from the beginning what we have heard what we have seen with our eyes what we have looked at and touched with our hands concerning the word of life And the life was manifested, and we have seen and testify and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was manifested to us. What we have seen and heard, we proclaim to you also, so that you too may have fellowship with us. And indeed, our fellowship is with the Father uh, and with his Son, Jesus Christ. These things we write so that our joy may be made complete. That's a great passage. It's great. Can I... Okay, can I pitch a recommendation for this episode and how we handle this? And you can total freedom to reject my suggestion. Okay. It's a short passage in the New Testament, and there's so much we could say about it. So much, right? 
But uh, this that was one that was pretty much one long sentence plus a short one at the end. And I think most people, when they read this the first time, if if you really haven't studied it in depth, it's like, what's happening? That was a really long sentence. What is it saying? Uh, maybe we can just model some, like, get real granular here. Okay. Like Bible study methods tools. Okay. In okay. this passage. I hear you. I hear the words uh, you're saying. You know, pr- I paying don't attention reject this to offer. verbs and pronouns and th- repeated words. And yep. just talk about how that can make a difference. How do, what do you think about that? Well... If I reject it, it's just going to make can. me look bad. So I'm well, I'm just saying that. we could so, yeah, let's talk about the substance of it, but I, I, I the, the no, spirit No, I, I think of, that makes a ton of sense. Let's what do we it. just talked about, right? The spirit of this passage is to go, how do we equip people to handle passages they read? Because I do think if you were to read that for the first time and then someone was like, what did you just read? Like, uh, <laughs> yep. a lot of what we have something, you know. Okay. So you want to so, do yeah. it? Okay. What so, do you do first? Let, let me just Teach give me you advice. let me just give you guys I would say the top uh let's say the top three things that I'm gonna pay attention to in a passage. Ooh. This that- better be on the screen, editor. <laughs> I want them boom, boom, and I want a sound effect each time it comes up. So I just make it happen. <laughs> okay. Here we go. There's so many things you could pay attention to, but for when I hit a confusing passage. I slow down and I go, I'm going to pay attention to three things. And that's going to usually enlighten me a lot. The first one is verbs. Verbs. <laughs> All I hear in my head is show the picture. So there's going to be something. There's going to uh, some amazing sound just happened. Oh, I don't okay. hear it here, but I know it happened. And okay. I'm very excited about it. Verbs. Okay. Which you're like, okay, guys, I want to read the Bible and not go back to English class. But God has chosen to reveal himself to us in words, which means... We have to embrace the fact that we have to understand the English language and go back to grammar school a little bit. Mm-hmm. And so even if you need a verb refresher, uh, do it, you know, because you might be like, I don't know what verbs are. That's fine. Uh, find a refresher online and then get going. And so the first thing I would do is go through the passage and go, I'm just going to underline. I underline every verb. And if it's a command verb, like someone saying, do this, mm-hmm. uh, prepare for the coming of the Lord, that's a command, right? I double underline it. And so... I would go through here, and I'm not going to do the whole passage, but like what was, I'm going to underline was, from the beginning, what we have heard is a verb, what we have seen is a verb, with our eyes, what we have observed and have touched, just underlined all that, with our hands concerning the word of life. That's just verse one. So again, I'm not trying to understand what it means yet. I'm literally just giving myself the simple task, underline the verbs in the passage. I think that's one of the key ways to make sense of what's happening. Yes. Do you want to say something or should I give thing number two? Oh, well, How do we want to talk about that, that real Let's quick? talk about verbs. Let's talk about what Why we just matter. saw. Well, yeah. hold on. So, okay. So, so you just underlined have, um, what we have heard, what we have seen, uh, what we have looked at and touched with our eyes. Here's, uh, so now I'm, I'm observing and I'm, th- I'm thinking my way through it and, and I'm noticing some stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, whatever the what is, we got to talk about that. Right. But, uh, whatever <laughs> the what is, um, it is something that um, has been heard and seen and looked at and touched Mm -hmm. by the author of this letter. Mm -hmm. So I've got that for, this is whatever is, whatever it is, uh, it's a firsthand account. Mm -hmm. So that's really important. And that's probably gonna matter down the road. So I've got that filed away. Then I notice, um, and this is just nerdy grammar stuff, but I notice it's it's a, in the perfect tense. Because it has that have. Included. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So it's it's not just what we heard. It's what we have heard. It's not just what we saw. It's what we have seen, right? So there's this sense of we saw it in the past and has ongoing ramifications into the present moment, right? So that's that's what the perfect tense means. So I'm noticing that. So it's something him, the, whoever wrote this, who we know who it is, it's John, mm-hmm. and, who, and someone else, right? Because there's a we. So there's there's more than one. Uh, they have seen and heard this thing and they, uh, and it is having an impact to this day. So mm-hmm. those are like, w- w- all we've done is looked at verbs, but mm-hmm. I feel like we've got, we've got something that we're working with now. Now right. there's what, what that has done just by looking at those verbs, what it's done is it's piqued my curiosity about the what, what <laughs> right. is the what mm-hmm. that they have seen, right? right? So is that, are you going to yeah. your next, your number two now? Uh, yeah, we can. I, I did you want to say something else about that? No, yeah. I just think that that's a perfect example of 
taking a passage that just looks like, you know, this paragraph full of a whole lot of words that look jumbled sometimes upon first reading and going, okay, I'm seeing something emerge. Um, so underlining verbs. Verbs are my first favorite thing to pay attention to. Second favorite thing to pay attention to are connecting words. Connecting words. Connecting words. It's on the uh, screen. Or connecting phrases. These are, are words or phrases that com uh, that connect ideas together. The simplest one is and or but. Uh, Gross. Conjunction, junction, what's your function? Or, <laughs> or, or, yes. So the, I'm just saying those are Thus, types of examples. Yeah. If I say, you know. Therefore. Yeah, therefore, it's it's showing a relationship between two ideas, whether of comparison, contrast, or a type of this follows that, uh, consequences, if, then, all of that. Um, so I would go through that. So let's look at verse two and look for those things. That life which was revealed and, I'm going to put a little box. I put a box around mine. And we testify and declare to you that uh, the eternal life that was with the Father and was revealed to us. Um, what we, I'm going to keep going. What we have seen and, there's another connecting one, and heard, we also declare to you so that you may also have fellowship with us. So, so that is box and. Indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and with His Son, and with His Son Jesus Christ. If so you I'd, see a bunch of ands, <laughs> a bunch of ands, that the first thing it tells you is you're probably dealing with a list right. um, of things, and that's good to know. So yeah, I just boxed several ands and a so that. <laughs> um, and again, you might feel like, why? Why are we doing this? Um, it's showing us a flow of ideas. It's connecting things together. It's showing us lists. It's showing us that and is showing ideas that are. Um, uh, related to one another in comparison or related to the same thing rather than in contrast. If you saw the life that was revealed, but we have seen it, that would mean something totally different, right? This episode of Clearly is brought to you by our friends at Better Man. Better Man is about unleashing a better masculinity and manhood. It's one that's rooted in God's timeless word. Imagine that. Uh, a free resource for churches and men's groups and fathers, brothers, uh, husbands. Better Man is a deep dive into what it means to be a real man. Too, here's the deal. Too many men today are lost and they're walking around in a masculinity fog. And Better Man is the clarity and conviction you need to be the man God has called you to be. So check them out at betterman.com. That's betterman.com. So we see that. We also see a really important one show up in verse three, so that you may have fellowship with us. There's a lot of so that's in the Bible, and they're always really important because everything that's said before is leading up to this and saying, all of this has been said to accomplish this thing mm -hmm. so that this would happen. And what is the thing that he's wanting to accomplish in the thing he's uh, proclaiming? He's proclaiming to us. something, right? We don't know what it is yet. It's just been called what that we've seen, heard, observed, and touched, all these things. And he's doing it so that we might have fellowship, that you, reader, would have fellowship with us. And then he says, and indeed, our fellowship is with the Father and the Son. You would have fellowship with us. We have fellowship with God. Yep. the Father and the Son. I'm proclaiming it to you for the sake of fellowship. And there's one more so that. In verse 4, there's another so that. So that our joy mm -hmm. may be made complete. We're writing. So, yep. so why why are we sharing these things with you? Why are we writing these things to you? Two two things. Uh, so that you'd have fellowship, koinonia, relationship, uh, participation with us um, and, and us with the Father and the Spirit. And that our joy might be made full. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, so good. Now, that's still, that's really helpful, but it still doesn't give us the whole picture yet because we, we need to know the mm -hmm. subject. Right. And we don't know that because he's kind of being weird and cryptic. He is, yeah. Um, which I'll just share, share my third thing, and then we can talk a little bit about this. The third thing that I think is one of the most helpful things to pay attention to is repeated words or ideas. Repeated words. Repeated words or ideas. Um, and, and I say ideas because we're not always looking exactly for exact same repeated words. Like, oh, and is obviously a repeated word. But just ideas, like-minded things. Um, so one thing that has shown up here is these very tactile words of seen, touched, heard show up again, not just in verse one like we talked about, but in verse two, 
that life was revealed and we have seen it there. That's repeated again. Uh, testify to it, declare to you the eternal life. So I'm seeing the word life being repeated in verse two um, that was with the Father and revealed to us what we have seen. There's seen again and heard. There's heard again. We declare to you. Um, fellowship gets repeated twice in that word. So we're seeing these, these things kind of rise to the surface, these repeated ideas that the author is saying, uh, seen, heard. We see it's a life that we're talking about in verse two. We see uh, this long description of the thing the author has seen, heard, and observed is a life concerning the word of life. That life was revealed to us. Um, and all of that repeated ideas and words are helping make sense of uh, of some things coming out of the passage for us. And mm. so those three things, if you're ever in a confusing passage like this, or whether it's Old Testament, New Testament, and you read it and you're like, what? I don't understand. That's my go-to starting place. And before we get in too much deeper into it, what we're about to talk about here, mm -hmm. I think most people, and I feel the same temptation, we read something that feels a little bit confusing to us. We can't quite make sense of it. Our knee-jerk reaction is pull up a commentary, Google mm -hmm. it online. Um, commentaries are great. They're great help. But um, we're not learning to handle God's word and search it for ourselves when we do that. It's not that those commentaries are giving us the, a wrong answer all the time. I mean, so many times we're getting right, good answers, uh, but we're not learning how to get the answer ourselves. Mm -hmm. And that can become a problem uh, for a lot of reasons. Uh, uh, we, we have been given this beautiful gift of God's word that we have access to in our language. Um, people have died so that that would be possible for us, mm -hmm. so that we could search it for ourselves and know what it says and not have to know it through somebody else, but we could really come to understand it. And then when we're sharing the gospel with others or discipling others and they're coming to us with questions, we can go, let's do it together. Let's search it together. Uh, there is a place for uh, the wealth of wisdom of the saints through commentaries, but I think too quickly we jump there without going, I'm going to talk to the Lord and I'm going to take out my pen <laughs> and I'm going to do some investigation. I'm going to mm -hmm. be a little Sherlock Holmes with this passage and figure out, What's going on here? Yep. And so what we see going on here is a very, uh, a life that has been witnessed firsthand uh, that is being proclaimed so that fellowship would be had by the those who are receiving this letter, a fellowship that is with humans, authors, the authors of this passage, and with God. Mm -hmm. Yep. And we got all that from verbs and connecting words and repeated Ideas yeah. and phrases. That's good. That's real good. It is so good to study the Bible. Mm -hmm. uh, there's so much here for us. Now let's um, let's maybe uh, turn our attention now to making sure we have the right subject. Mm -hmm. uh, the what? John yeah. opens his whole letter with a relative pronoun. Right? Some translations say that. Yeah, that or, that or what, what or that which was or what was from the beginning. So there's the that. And what is the that or who is the that? or what? Mm -hmm. So now we have to kind of like sleuth a little bit and look. Mm -hmm. uh, what do we know about it? Well, we know that whatever the what is, and this is, you might do this. You might, uh, while you're studying, get a pad of paper out or maybe it's your journal. And you might write at the top the word what or that right? Mm -hmm. With quotes around it. And you, and you just start identifying all of its attributes, mm -hmm. right? And uh, th this is how we investigate. And this is how we come to an answer at the end of things. Okay. So um, that, uh, that which was from the beginning or what was from the beginning. Uh, so whatever it is, it was from the beginning. It's something that can be seen and heard and looked at and touched. And then, and then it qualifies it um, what was from the beginning concerning the word of life. See that last um, mm -hmm. phrase there in verse one, concerning the word of life. So whatever the that is, it is a thing that is concerning the word of life. Well, okay, mm. I, what's the word of life? <laughs> Again, this, this is just us teaching you how we study the Bible. Well, now what I'm writing on a separate you know, part of the page is word of life. I need to probably figure out what that is because whatever mm -hmm. this is, it isn't the word of life, but it's those things that are concerning the word of life, mm -hmm. right? Uh, then, 
verse two happens. In verse two, it's uh, we'll just for time's sake say this. It's it's kind of like a little broken out section in uh, John's speech, uh, John's Almost letter. It's like a parenthetical. That's right. Idea or phrase. So, so you could technically put verse one and verse three together. Right. Um, but he wanted to say something about that life, mm -hmm. and he says it in verse two. So what was from the beginning, the, the thing we've seen concerning the word of life, verse two, here's the breakout little parentheses, and their life was manifested, uh, like revealed, and we have seen and testify and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and manifested to us. So it's it's weird because I want to immediately say, um, gosh, this sure sounds like we're talking about Jesus. Mm -hmm. And I think we are. But I, John is being a little artsy here yes. because <laughs> he is using um, he's using language that doesn't sound gendered, right? Mm -hmm. So um, the life was manifested, which was with the Father and manifested to us. You would if you think if you were talking about Jesus, it seems like you would want to say who was manifested right. and uh, who was with the Father, mm -hmm. uh, but it says which. So it's like, okay, either John's being, um, uh, he's using poetic language mm -hmm. uh, or we're not talking about a person. Right. Um, so uh, I'm, I'm now left having to go, do these attributes um, uh, accord with what I know about Jesus? Mm -hmm. Well, Jesus was with the Father. Mm -hmm. um, Jesus was manifested to us. He's from uh, the beginning. Jesus is from the beginning. Jesus um, calls himself life. I'm the way, the truth, and the life, John 14, mm -hmm. 6. So Jesus calls himself uh, the life. The, the life. Like this object, the life. Yeah. yeah. Um, so I, I'm getting the strong impression, aren't you too, that like mm -hmm. um, this is at, at least about the person of Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. but maybe, um, maybe even a little bit broader than that, because verse one says it's concerning the word of life, the stuff that, uh, the what that was from the beginning, it's concerning the word of life. So that makes me think maybe it's, it's the word of life, namely Jesus and the, the message that he, uh, was conveying, uh, mm -hmm. to the world. Um, Feel free to butt in at yeah. any point. But the reason I think that is because when I get to verse five, which we didn't read, um, he gets a little bit clearer and he says, this is the message mm -hmm. we have heard from him and announced to you. And here's the message that God is light and in him is no darkness at all. And if you know this book, you know, the whole rest of the book is him trying to give us categories for how can somebody know if they're in the fold or not mm. what what are the markers of a christian um and and he repeatedly is saying folks who look like the lord are of the lord folks mm. who don't look and act like the lord they're not of the lord these are this is how you can know um so there's this message running through there mm -hmm. and i wonder if that's um if that's what he has in mind here and at the beginning. is more the, the message of the life that Jesus brought rather than Jesus. Well, you can't, uh, you can't, you can't touch, touch a message. It. You can't touch a message, <laughs> Right. <laughs> but Jesus and the news he brings are all bound up they are. together. Well, it makes me think about Jesus does say, I am the life. And then he will also say, uh, this is eternal life that they, you know, know me and the father um, that they know you got through your son whom you sent. And so there is this both, it is me. And sometimes he talks about it as if it is apart from him, um, but through him mm -hmm. always. So this, this in, uh, introductory paragraph is, is written very much like that. But I think the reason I, I continue to go, well, it's, it's gotta be primarily Jesus and maybe secondarily the message mm -hmm. he brings mm -hmm. because it's something seen and heard and right. touched. And that, that that touched phrase, touched with our hands. I yeah. love that he makes a point to say, if you were thinking I was being poetic, yeah. touched with our hands. Yep. I put my hands on him. It's like, yeah, we know that John had that experience with Jesus. So, um, which as an aside, is such a comfort as a believer who's not a first century believer, isn't it? 
Like, this passage has comforted me so much. Just go, there is a real person who others have touched with their hands. And I haven't. And I I so would love to see him in person. And sometimes we struggle with doubts. Is he real? Was he real? And here you have someone proclaiming, I saw him. I touched him with my own hands. Mm -hmm. And and this is what I'm proclaiming to you. He emphasizes that so much. Uh, And by the way, I love what you did there. And this is such a good... um, thing for us to file away. You you went back to the text and you go, okay, let me test my theory of what mm, this mm-hmm. is with what the words say. Right. If I can't touch with my hands the, those words, then it, right. it must not just be words that right. John's talking about. It must be a person. Mm-hmm. And, uh, uh, and this is uh, a huge, this was a huge um, testimony uh, to first century um, believers that that there there were people that, uh, Jesus the resurrected Jesus revealed himself to over five hundred people, right. including the the apostles, and uh, this was actually the way that in the early church uh, in first second uh, third century that the early church established um, pastoral legitimacy mm-hmm. was what is my rela- what is my pastor's relationship to John and right. Peter. And like, can to can we tra- can we trace witnesses. that back? Um, uh, because because it was so important that like there were guys that like put their hands in his side. Mm-hmm. There were guys that were there and and saw him with their eyes. And so, so this is actually a, a and, and now we have a firsthand account mm-hmm. of somebody saying, "Hey, I I was there. Like I saw. I I heard. I'm using poetic language because I'm talking about the word of life and." And I could have just said Jesus, mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. but he's John. He's the guy who, who wrote in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And you're like, whoa, what is happening? Mm-hmm. But he's going, I'm, I'm just telling you guys, like mm-hmm. I, t- I touched him. We, we did, we saw him, we heard him. Like mm-hmm. um, that changes everything. If he really rose from the dead, it changes mm-hmm. everything. Mm-hmm. And, and John's saying, I'm, I'm here to tell you he did. Cause I, cause I went like this. Mm-hmm. Right. And I, and I, uh, he's yeah. real. Well, and I love too how communal this opening uh, paragraph is, especially with the rest of the book and where it's going to go, that he says, the reason I'm proclaiming it to you, you know, he could have said something very individualistic. The reason I proclaim this to you in verse three, that so that could be followed with, so that you don't die in your sins, so that uh, you have eternal life, so that you, very singular, but instead it it, it has this invitational, almost like, hey, we're at a party. We have fellowship with the Father and the Son. Like we, there's a, he's writing it, it from we. It's a plural language, mm-hmm. you know, not an I. We have fellowship with Jesus, with the Father, and we want you to have fellowship with us. Kind of mm-hmm. like we want you in on this. We want you in the fold of this communal experience mm-hmm. that's not just with God, but with one another. Yeah. And uh, which is another way to talk about salvation, that it is becoming part of the family of God. And that makes sense of what he's about to continue writing because so much of his letter deals with the, this idea of if we really know him, we will love one another. It's connecting fellowship with God and fellowship with others mm-hmm. uh, very strongly through the rest of the letter. And so even in, in his introductory remarks about what it means to be saved, he's framing it as fellowship. With us yeah. and with God, yeah, companionship, friendship, um, togetherness, like that's the invitation of the gospel. Mm-hmm. Is is come be with us as we're with Him. Yeah, I just think that's so amazing, and that again came from noticing that repeated word fellowship, which is going to show up in the next paragraph, by the way, um, and we see that just kind of be littered all throughout this mm-hmm. book, and it, it's just wonderful. Yeah. Jimmy, when we began this episode, did you think we would be having a grammar lesson? I, when we began this episode, I was waiting for the NyQuil to kick in because you have not taken NyQuil I yet. I feel. Have you taken NyQuil? I don't want to talk about it. You did not take NyQuil before Ladies we and gentlemen, this episode, did you? I don't feel good. Well. Somehow he made it through. But I made it through. We talked about 1 John chapter 1, and we did get a little, uh, you know, 
in the weeds of verbs and pronouns, but it was awesome. So, hey, if you thought it was awesome, you know what you could do? Wait for it. Hit the subscribe button. Like this. Maybe send it to a a favorite English teacher of yours and just say, hey, look. (laughs) I don't don't know. Don't don't do that, actually. You don't like my jokes. Uh, I. Uh, join join our email list. You can look at the show notes below, uh, and you'll be the first to find out uh, what's going on with us and uh, with the podcast. And and uh, also, you can become a Patreon supporter for as little as five bucks a month. You can help us make these episodes happen uh, to get the good news of Jesus and um, clarity on God's word to more people. So uh, you can do that uh, down below as well. We heart you. We heart you. We heart you. And we will see you next time. <laughs>